Welcome to the Factor Uncensored. This is video from Capitol Hill in D.C. Members with the Jewish Voices for Peace gathering there for a rally, calling on the Biden administration to call for a ceasefire in Gaza to de-escalate the violence and prevent a further loss of life. This comes one day after a blast tore a Gaza hospital apart, killing hundreds. The war has been ongoing for nearly two weeks now. More than 1,400 people in Israel have been killed, the death toll even high in Palestine. More than 3,400 people there have been killed, both sides, including children, among the dead. Let's talk about it. Joining us tonight here on The Factor Uncensored, Texas State Representative Ron Reynolds, University of Houston, downtown Prof Professor Dr. Dietrich von Biedenfeld and political analyst Angela Box. So we have seen this death toll on both sides. Mm -hmm. President Biden is there now. Uh, your thoughts on him being there and will he make a difference? Will he try to bring some peace? Obviously. We know reality. Mm -hmm. No peace is coming anytime soon, but your thoughts on that? Well, before I get to that point, uh, first of all, I would not want to hear any Democrat ever say again that we don't need weapons to defend ourselves because if the Israelis had weapons two weeks ago when paragliders were coming into a music festival, we might have a different situation. And the Democrat Party here is in a real pickle because um, we need to have some real moral clarity about what happened in the last two weeks because what we witnessed happening <coughs> to Israel and to innocent people, the wholesale slaughter of children, of Holocaust survivors, etc., whole families wiped out. There is no moral equivalence of what's going on here. So we need to be very clear as human beings to say that we do not support Hamas terrorists, we do not support Hezbollah, we do not support Iran funding these terrorists. And what I'm seeing in the Democrat Party is the pickle they are in because why they mouth support for Israel, the official support for Israel, you see the base of the Democrat Party, you see this actual insurrection that happened in the Capitol today, and I guarantee you're not going to see one single person arrested and thrown into jail for 25 years like the January 6th defendants, but I digress. And the Democrat Party's base, it's the usual suspects, it's, it's BLM, it's Antifa, it's liberal white women. It's the people who burn down cities and loot and riot. They are all going to these pro-Hamas uh, rallies all over the country. And even in, t in Houston, Hilton Hotels had to cancel an event because they were going to have a pro-Hamas conference with people like Rashida Tlaib and Linda Sarsour coming to speak. And when social media got wind of it, they had to shut it down. But I find it very troubling that the Democrat Party's base seems to be squarely really on the side though, of Hamas. Did the hotel say this is a pro-Hamas event? It is a pro-Hamas event. No, no, it, did the hotel say that? They said it was a pro-Hamas event. And in the in the Hilton Hotel's charter, it says we will not uh, have any uh, pro-terrorist organizations there. Now look, Linda Sarsour, Rashida Tlaib, So you're these going are on record saying the hotel said we are hosting a pro Hamas they knew before it was, this. It was a it was a it was a conference in some more in support of Hamas and what was going on in the in, okay. in uh, All right. the we're gonna, we're gonna let you slide. So Ron Reynolds, state representative, your thoughts. Will Joe Biden, our president, make a difference there? In, in Israel with this war that we're seeing? Absolutely. Uh, President Biden went there today, first of all, as a sign to show support for Israel. President Biden has been unequivocal that they stand solidly with Israel and against the terrorists from Hamas. Uh, he went there to open up the avenue for humanitarian aid to come into Gaza. That was very positive. And unlike what Angela just espoused, uh, the Democrats have been very supportive of uh, humanitarian aid and, in fact, President Biden is going on record to say they want to have additional uh, appropriations so that they can fund uh, more military support for Israel to defend itself against the terrorists. So the Democrats have been very supportive. I don't think this is a partisan issue. I think this is a time where statesmen like President Biden come together and say, hey, we need to do what's best. Unlike the Republicans' un uh, inability to elect a speaker at a crisis right now. And we're going we to get to that later. Yeah, okay, get to that later. <laughs> but Representative Reynolds, there have been some Democrats who have been 
<laughs> not forthcoming. That's true. And That's completely true. supportive of, of Israel. They they re they represent a minority, just oh. like you have a minority sometimes of of Republicans that do something. There's a small minority that are very very. Uh, I guess the the squad, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're referring to. AOC uh, and a few of them have calls for a ceasefire for Israel against Palestine, Palestine against Hamas. Uh, but the, but but that most people are saying no. Israel has a right to defend itself. What most of us believe is that there should be some kind of de-escalation uh, so that there's not more bloodshed. Now I think that. Israel certainly has a right to defend himself, but I hope that there will be a diplomatic solution so that we don't see this long-term war. That's what President Biden also reiterated today. Don't do it out of vengeance. Mm -hmm. You know, strike to make sure that they don't have the capability to strike again, but don't try to decimate them. Learn from the mistakes that we've made, and that's what I think the, the reasonable people in the room are saying, that there needs to be some kind of de-escalation. There needs to be a way to to, to, to go forward so that there can be a peaceful resolution. And Dr. Von Biedenfeld, there is a concern that this could escalate instead of de-escalate. To the north of Iran, we have Lebanon with Hezbollah, and we also have uh, Iran uh, who could get involved, and then that's a big problem for the United States. Your, your thoughts on that? That's one of the important aspects of the president visiting Israel is to show that we, we are going to be in the region. We're not going to be scared away sending the Gerald R. Ford, uh, uh, the aircraft carrier, into the region and saying this is going to dissuade terrorism. So I think it is important to have the physical presence and to send the message to Iran and other actors that we're not going to tolerate certain behaviors while recognizing that this is a very fractured area and the people that the meeting that was canceled with Joe Biden today with Jordan, Egypt, and Abbas. The PLO is not the same as Hamas. Hamas is not the same as Fatah. And so just like Republicans and Democrats, but even more fractious, these organizations have different objectives. They have different leaders. And so when you have an 80-year-old meeting with an 87-year-old meeting with a 73-year-old, it doesn't necessarily trickle down to some of these antagonistic individuals on the ground. It's eye-opening when you say those numbers. Mm. Welcome back to The Factor on Censored. It's been more than two weeks since Kevin McCarthy was ousted as House Speaker, and Republicans have once again failed to find his replacement in an expeditiously manner. Congressman Jim Jordan's second attempt to collect enough votes fell apart as Republicans continued to hold out on him. Now the party must decide whether to stick with him and hold more votes or look for a new candidate. As Congress grows increasingly desperate, frustration also continues to brew. Our guests are back to talk about it. Glad to have you all here. Now, Angela, this affects a very important issue, what's going on in Gaza, getting aid, getting funding to send the military or provide what they need for assistance there. Why can't we make a decision on the House Speaker when it comes to Republicans? So I said two weeks ago that Matt Gates doing this, he's either going to be a hero or a zero, and I think he's a hero. I'm going to tell you why. Because every leftist uh, hair, every leftist on in this country's hair is on fire with the thought of Jim Jordan being Speaker of the House. Jim Jordan will be the most consequential Speaker of the House since Newt Gingrich. Jim Jordan will open the books on COVID, why and how it happened. He will open Open the books on the 2020 election. He will open the books on what really happened on January 6th. The Biden open border, which, you know, back to our other topic, the open border right now, they're, they're admitting that we're going to have an Islamic terror attack because of this open border. That's going to be opened up. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into the Biden crime family and who that affects. And it doesn't just affect Joe Biden. It affects the entire swamp. And the swamp, the Uniparty is fighting back. The swamp, the Uniparty does not want Jim Jordan. That tells me that Jim Jordan is the exact right person to be Speaker of the House. And I, I, I think that the Republicans must stay united behind Jim Jordan. He's going to be fantastic. Dr. Von Biedenfeld, does Jim Jordan come with a lot of baggage? He's been a huge Trump supporter. He's been an election denier. And <laughs> many of his people say, look, we're not going to support him with that. Absolutely. And he doesn't necessarily come with the same uh, David Duke light comments of Scalise, but there is some back history with his coaching and there's a lot of personal history. There's still the looming aspect of the 14th Amendment. Do insurrectionists even belong in Congress? So there's going to be that push, but he is, as, as I'll agree with Angela, he is somebody who is in theory a firebrand 
that can push the Republican agenda forward if they can unify. Because right now, what you see but is But when Hakeem, you talk about that agenda, is that an agenda that America is interested in? Talking about the insurrection, talking about the election, when we have bigger pressing issues in this country right now, and worldwide when we talk about the Gaza war. And, and overall, that's why I think it's going to be less impactful for his speakership that he was part of the uh, sort of Trump camp of maintaining the election uh, sort of denial of Biden's presidency. So I think in that sense, it actually strengthens him in a certain sense that we have bigger problems to worry about than what happened last year, because what's going to happen next year? How are kids going to eat? Student loan repayments are beginning. Uh, we're, we're looking at trillions of dollars of debt. But that doesn't uh, sort of impact the idea that Hakeem Jeffries has created a uniform 212 each time. And the strength of the Republican Party has typically been the unification and cohesion, even if a policy isn't popular, the party will stick together. Together. And so we've seen this divisiveness between DeSantis, Trump, Haley, and those groups, and it's trickled into this election uh, for speaker where there isn't really a uniform area, and sensible candidates that you say might be more moderate are not as attractive to the base, and they can't get the majority. Representative Reynolds, do you see Republicans now reaching out to Democrats to get Jim Jordan in place, brokering deals? The Republicans are in total disarray. Okay, they, they, they are showing that they cannot govern. They can't elect a damn speaker, okay? The Jim Jordan has not passed a single bill in 16 years in Congress. <laughs> he, he hasn't passed a bill. This is a guy that is an insurrectionist. This is a MAGA uh, supporter. Trump backed him, but he can't get the votes from his own colleagues. So Democrats are never going to vote for Jim Jordan for speaker because they know he's incompetent and incapable to govern. And he is focused on divisive issues. He's not focused on the economy, jobs. He's focused on uh, uh, investigating Hunter Biden and, and, and Joe Biden. That is what this guy is doing. He's not good for America, and Republicans are showing they can't govern at a time that America needs them the most. This right. is, this, got, give you 10 seconds. Okay, Go ahead. This is not true. Jim Jordan is focused on the, the issues that the American people want. Closing the southern border, becoming energy independent again, bringing back sanity into our economic policies, stopping these endless wars. That's what Jim Jordan is Taking away right. a woman's right to choose. Oh, All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be